All right, welcome. We have a few folks still coming in, but it's time to get started. <laughs> Thank you, I've got some uh, fans up here in the front, so j come join them if you like. Um, no, so today we hope to um, connect a few dots for you, uh, things that you've already heard about this morning in the main keynote session, hopefully give you some uh, new information um, uh, on connecting uh, containers and VMs. Uh, some of this was just mentioned even uh, in the last uh, session in here, so maybe you're already aware of some of that work, so we're going to discuss that. Um, but first, let me give a quick introduction, uh, myself and, and Mohammed. So we both work for IBM. Uh, we work uh, in different divisions. I'm in the IBM Open Cloud Technologies area. And my current role is that I'm actually a maintainer in the upstream Docker community. We have a handful of uh, people at IBM involved in Docker. And uh, prior to that, I had 10 plus years involved in Linux and open source software. So open source is not uh, new to me. And I've, I've uh, been in that world and enjoyed that world for, for a good long time. And I'm and, and definitely enjoying my time uh, working in the Docker community. Uh, Mohammed Banakazami, um, who from now on I think we'll just say Mohammed B to keep it simple. Um, but he is a research staff member at IBM Research. Um, he is a contributor to both Neutron and Lib Network, which is we'll, we'll get into in a few minutes. Uh, he's an SDN uh, cloud expert uh, in the field. Many uh, in the Neutron community know uh, Mohammed well and does research obviously in those areas of cloud and networking. <laughs> so, um, so we're going to take you through a few things. You know, for us, it's the middle of the night on the East Coast, so hopefully we're going to stay awake. Hopefully we'll be able to keep you awake for at least the next 30, 40 minutes, and hopefully it'll be of, of interest to you as well. Now, one of the th first things we want to talk about is that hopefully um, we're not just putting, connecting some things together because we can. A lot of times as technologists, it's fun to, to hack around on the code and, and make things work. But we actually believe, and, and interestingly enough, although this picture is, is slightly different, uh, you saw a picture very similar to this uh, Jonathan Bryce showed this morning, that in this OpenStack ecosystem, we have people running uh, containers, we have people running VMs, we have people interested in bare metal, and various combinations of those. And the reason we drew our picture this way is to show that today, in some cases, obviously these network virtualization layers are, you know, disparate. They're using different technologies. And the question we want to answer is, you know, is there a way to unify those and bring those together so the, that these various um, compute technologies can work together in a combined uh, network model? And hopefully we can answer that today, show a demonstration, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. So I'm going to hand it over to Mohammed to talk through Neutron, given that's his area of expertise, and look at the basic concepts there. All right. Um, so if you guys um, attended the session that Kyle Mystery and Mark McLean had uh, this morning, you heard about Neutron to finally becoming what it was supposed to be, the API server with um, the database backend. And uh, that's what we have been witnessing during the past couple of cycles. We are going towards that model that Neutron Core becomes the API server where uh, the realization of that uh, API and also several services around it uh, are built in the ecosystem around Neutron, but not necessarily as part of the core Neutron. So um, Neutron has a very simple and straightforward API. Um, more importantly, it has a pluggable architecture and uh, allows different backend implementation. Um, the abstractions that it uses are close to the physical resources. So for better or worse, that's something that people who are familiar with networking are very familiar with. Um, and it has uh, turned out that uh, people are using the same kind of basic API in different uh, areas as well for network uh, virtualization. Um, so what are the basic concepts in Neutron? Uh, 
networks, essentially isolated layer two broadcast domain. Um, they can be private or shared. Uh, in addition to networks, uh, subnets are defined as IP address blocks and uh, they are associated with networks and um, they can have uh, other services uh, associated with them, DNS, DHCP, uh, can have gateways and um, in addition to subnets and networks, ports are uh, one of the core um, uh, components of Neutron. Um, they are essentially virtual switch ports that allows uh, compute uh, entities to get connected to uh, networks. They have MAC address and IP properties. And even though routers are not part of the official API, core API, they are practically um, widely used uh, uh, such that you can call them one of the more uh, basic concepts in Neutron. And they provide connectivity between networks to external networks uh, performing uh, network address translations and uh, providing capabilities such as IP, floating IPs. So these are the basic concepts in Neutron. And now Doc, uh, Phil will talk about Lib Network. All right, so, um, so we've looked at the, the concepts and API around Neutron. Uh, who's heard of Lib Network? It's not a, okay, good. Um, roughly almost a half of you have heard of Lib Network, it's a somewhat recent uh, project um, as far as uh, when it was actually merged. Um, actually, the Lib Network guys and, and myself have become better friends given that when they were merged, it blocked a PR of mine from getting merged because there was a clash. And so we've had to spend a few months working all that out. So uh, we've gotten to know each other fairly well. But um, Lib Network is basically pulling the network model out of the Docker engine into a separated module. And so that project uh, began, I want to say, uh, early summer, late spring, and was merged into Docker in the Docker 1.7 timeframe. Um, one of the important things about uh, making it separate from the engine was that now it, now it is a pluggable uh, framework that allows other implementations. And so that's going to be key here for what we're discussing. And, and the Lib Network, um, implementation uh, contains something called the container network model and we'll look in a minute at its concepts and how they map to Neutron uh, after that. Uh, but as I said, it was merged in 1.7 but in that original implementation, all it did was take the Docker engine's current bridge networking and move it into Lib Network. Uh, what you will hopefully hear about this week if you follow uh, the Docker community is that Docker 1.9 will be released, which is currently uh, in release candidate form, and the full capabilities that were promised in the original um, uh, announcement will be there, plugins, overlay networking, and so on. Um, so again, we've, we just looked at the basic concepts uh, that Neutron has. Lib Network has sort of three key concepts that are shown here a network, which is basically a collection of endpoints that all communicate with one another, an endpoint which connects a network uh, to a sandbox, and a sandbox is actually this, uh, has the configuration of an actual network stack. And so on Linux, you can think of that as a network namespace. It's abstracted such that other operating systems can have their sandbox implementation. So with these concepts, you then uh, have an API, uh, again, using the same network, endpoint, sandbox, uh, a very simplified, uh, you know, mostly around create, delete, join, leave. And then obviously there's some housekeeping that has to be done now that you're allowing for pluggability. And so there's a handshake interaction that happens with someone who wants to implement this API as a remote plugin. Um, so today, and I guess I should say very soon, not exactly today, unless you've downloaded the Docker 1.9 release candidate, you have a set of options when you use Lib Network as far as the driver for what will actually implement um, the address management, et cetera. Uh, and today, so you have the null driver, obviously no networking at all provided, host networking, sharing your network stack with the host, 
Uh, and again, that's something that's been available already. Uh, the bridge, which is the traditional Docker networking that's already uh, been there. And then overlay, which is the new multi-host networking, which you can take Docker's implementation, which uh, has, uses specific technologies, but this is where you can also plug in a remote driver, which will then provide uh, that capability. And so, uh, although remote driver is shown here separately, separately it really is a network driver, uh, but it, it uses the network plugin feature to implement that with your own custom backend. And so here's what a, a basic uh, remote driver would look like. Uh, there'll be a JSON RPC transport between you and the proxy driver. Uh, you'll be called with requests and you'll respond with a JSON payload. Uh, obviously, we're not going to dive real deep into what that looks like but the documentation is already there in GitHub and you can take a look at what it looks like to implement a remote driver uh, today in LibNetwork. Um, again, when Docker 1.9 is available, you'll find that there's a new subcommand within Docker that allows you to now create, connect container, containers to a created network, obviously disconnect, remove, inspect, and list uh, the networks that are available and we'll actually demonstrate that in a few moments. Uh, a little bit deeper on the create command is that this is where you can now specify a driver um, such as a, an external network plugin that will provide the network capabilities when you create a container connected to that network. And with that, uh, you can specify an IP address management driver or take the default one that's provided for you and also specify a subnet, again, mapping to the same neutron concept that Mohammed just mentioned. So at this point, I will turn it back over to Mohammed. So we've looked at neutron, we've looked at libnetwork, and now Mohammed will uh, show us um, a way that we can combine these technologies. Thank you. So uh, now that Docker provides a separate module for networking, namely in Leap Network, and that uh, module is pluggable and extendable. It's a good time that we look at what we have for networking for our virtual machines and bare metals and see if we could utilize it directly for um, interconnecting our containers as well. Um, with that idea in mind, we started looking at Neutron as that unifying uh, networking layer, and it turns out that other uh, people have been thinking along the same line and uh, we uh, joined efforts with the project Career, which uh, is aiming to provide that Docker network plugin that provides uh, uh, networking functionality to Docker through Neutron. And uh, as part of that project, we essentially are going to demonstrate how Neutron can be utilized for interconnecting containers and VMs. And uh, it is in our plans to uh, provide containerized images uh, of uh, Neutron network plugins as well, something that we are hopefully going to get into um, very soon. And um, as you can see um, from the tweet that I, we have quoted here from Kyle, um, it is coming together, everything with Neutron kind of becoming the API server, um, other open source projects such as Oven providing the network uh, functionality and career uh, bridging the gap uh, between uh, all these technologies. So uh, career is an open stack uh, project, so it is part of the ecosystem and it uses uh, what is available in OpenStack, Keystone for authentication, Neutron Client for accessing and utilizing Neutron, and other libraries and uh, uh, projects that are available, such as Oslo, uh, Config, or um, other libraries that we will uh, end up using. So I wanted to emphasize that and uh, get to how the mapping is done in project uh, career, the, or the Docker network plugin career. Uh, it turns out that the mapping is uh, kind of uh, 
straightforward uh, as uh, LibNetwork also provides similar kind of abstractions. Networks are in LibNetwork are similar to uh, neutron networks. Endpoints are similar to neutron ports. Um, just before the latest RC had released 1.9 RC1, IPAM was not uh, something that uh, was included in uh, LibNetwork, uh, but uh, in 1.9, uh, LibNetwork will provide IP address management as well. Um, regardless of that, the notion of subnets is something that we have been using for creating our ports on a specific network with certain IP um, addresses. And the other important concept in LibNetwork is join and leave, a way of connecting a container to a network, which is pretty much similar to what happens um, either in Neutron itself for some of the services or Nova when a VM gets created, um, the port um, or the virtual interface get plugged into a network or unplugged uh, from a network. And that, again, similar to what we have today in Nova or Neutron, requires um, a special code for different types of networks, whether you are using OVS or Linux Bridge or uh, more specialized kind of um, interfaces. So that the mapping is also rather simple. Just to show how Courier works, I'm going to try to demonstrate um, um, a small setup uh, that is described here, where I have two nodes uh, that are set up with dev stack. One is the full dev stack with all uh, OpenStack services. The other one is essentially a compute node and has also um, L2 agent. I am using the default Neutron, which uses ML2 plugin with um, OVS mechanism driver with VXLAN. And um, in these two nodes, I have Docker running with LibNetwork uh, and Courier also. Um, and I'm going to uh, try and uh, start containers and uh, using the uh, driver career um, for connecting them together. I just want to mention before getting to the demo that um, LibNetwork uses a key value store for communicating some data uh, among uh, multiple hosts. Um, that's what you see here as console. I, uh, I believe you could use uh, other uh, key value stores uh, as well. So with that, let me try to get to uh, the demo. I have two nodes. The one you see here in yellow is one of them, and this is the second node. So um, I'm going to use a couple of simple commands. As I said, you can use the network command in Docker now. And uh, as what, what you get here is the list of networks that are created, and these are the networks that get created by default. Um, and as you can see, each network has also a driver associated with it. So we have one for null, one for host, and one for breach. These are created by default. Um, alternatively, if I look at Neutron here, this is a dev stack setup default. By default, I get the two networks that DevStack sets up. And uh, that's what we have. So I'm going to go and create a network with uh, Docker. And specify the driver. If you don't specify the driver, by default, the bridge driver will be used. And um, pick a name. So a new network got created. If we look at the networks, now you can see there is a network here. And as you can see, the driver is career. Um, alternatively, again, if we look at neutron networks, 
Oh, neutron. Network list. You see, Phil, I told you we used the recorded demo. <laughs> um, so, a network got created. Um, so, the version of Docker is being used here is the one just before uh, Docker 1.9. So, it doesn't have the IPAM in it. And uh, by default, we use a subnet pool that is um, uh, created um, uh, and new networks um, get a subnet out of that subnet pool. When the first endpoint gets created for that uh, particular network. Um, so now that we have a network, let me just go and check and see if that work network is showing up on the other node as well. Uh, here is net one on career. So let's go and create a virtual uh, a container. And I think somewhere here I have a um, command that is, this is a standard Docker run. As you can see, now you can specify the network you want your, connect, uh, your container to be connected to. So container one is already there. Let's try something else. Oh. Let's do something easier. Oh, uh, so if you guys could just look that way, <laughs> I will fall. So as you can see, uh, during the past um, um, couple of weeks, we have been going through a lot of uh, churns because um, uh, Lib Network was going through a lot of uh, churns. So our configurations is not as great as they should be. So let me um, see if I can get this thing working. My token got expired and even though we can use this looks good. I think I can do the same here. And let me start clear here. Um, where are we? So you think this will work? Uh. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> I noticed Bill just sat there. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so we created the network, uh, a container. Let's do the same on the other node. Let's use a different name. So if you notice, the other one was 10.10.0.2. This guy is 10.10.0.4. If you have used Neutron before, you can guess what happened to the other addresses. Um, and the, the ping works. Um, <laughs> Phil wanted to have a real application. And I told him that if it is a networking demo, we just do the ping, ping works, we declare victory and say <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> so, um, but uh, the ping works. So let's see if we can continue along this line. Um, so what happened? Neutron, now we have maybe some other, some stuff that we may not need, but let me see. Neutron netlist, 
grep for um, 10.10. .10. This is the network that got created for our container. This is net one. I want to boot a VM using the same network. Um, to do that, let me do this. And since I don't remember as simple as this is, okay, let me try to remember. So we say Nova boot, we specify the image. This is the image. We say flavor, say one. We say net, we specify the network ID now. We oh, it is Nick, Nick and I see. Here, yeah. This one? Yeah. I think so, you're right. Thank you. Um, and this is the network ID. Oh, yes. Uh, exactly. So the VM is booting. Uh, and this is where I um, use uh, Horizon to show you um, what is um, happening on the Horizon dashboard. But considering that I am running out all of these out of a VM sitting in Yorktown, um, I am going to switch to a recorded demo, uh, which is exactly the same thing, but we won't need to wait for uh, the Horizon to come up. So, um, let's see. Do you guys see that? This is exactly the same thing. Actually, what you were seeing was the recorded demo. No, just kidding. Um, so, here I'm just booting a VM, but then I just uh, go switch to Horizon and show you a couple of other things that we have. So here, the demo is, um, I think I can view this thing in full screen. Do you guys see it properly? Okay, I think this is reasonable enough. Um, so you can see the instances. We don't show containers. This is something that in Korea we are discussing how to show containers, whether we need a new tab or where to show them. But this is the VM that just got created. And um, I go to the console. And I feel a lot more confident now that uh, I'm using the recorded demo. <laughs> um, logging to the VM. Um, and I'm going to do what we do in networking demos. Um, this guy got 10.10.0.5 as the IP address. And I'm going to just ping uh, one of the containers and see if it works. Here we go. So another ping now is between the VM and the container. Um, and just to show you um, how these things are kind of getting uh, pulled together, I'm going to show another ping, uh, this time from uh, one of the containers to the VM. Um, let's see. So um, this is the address for the VM. And if you have worked again with Neutron, one way ping is working, the other is not working, you immediately say security groups. Um, so um, by default, there is no security group associated with the networks we are using here uh, for um, our containers. That can change. Uh, I will briefly discuss about uh, that in future work. But if that's the case, if I set the security group properly for my container, I should be able to ping. So I'm going to go find the um, port uh, that is connected to the VM to find its security group. Um, I get the security group, and that's the default security group that allows outbound traffic but no inbound traffic. Uh, and I'm going to try and apply it to the port that was used uh, for the container. Um, I get the port ID of the 
container that we have right running on the top part of the screen, uh, still trying to ping. Um, I'm going to set the uh, security group. Um, So you specify the security group and the port ID, and uh, yet another ping. So this is essentially the simple demo that we um, had. So now, practically, uh, you saw how, uh, what's that? I think it's right. No, not here. There you go. Yeah. So, um, so we showed uh, Neutron could be used for just. We knew that uh, Neutron is utilized for um, bare metals through Ironic, for VMs, um, but also now for containers. So, what are the future directions? Some of the gaps and mismatches. Um, one of the main issues that we need to address uh, in both communities is the issue, the fact that uh, OpenStack is a multi-tenant uh, project um, and Docker uh, is not at the moment. So uh, that is something that we need to figure out how to uh, provide these services for um, different tenants. And it looks like that the foundations for supporting multi-tenancy may be coming uh, in Docker, uh, we need uh, to figure out how security groups can be applied in the context of Docker networking, um, whether port mapping is really important uh, or not. Now that every container gets its own IP is another mismatches that I have listed here. And there are a lot of things. The project uh, got started just a few months ago. Um, it has a several contributors um, that you will hear from uh, tomorrow as well. Um, but uh, we have a significant amount of work uh, ahead of us, and we are hoping that Mitaka uh, will be the cycle where we will achieve a lot of these uh, goals. Docker labels uh, are there, and that's obviously the first thing that comes to mind for uh, adding functionality that is not there. Um, Integration with Docker Swarm is uh, important. If we are providing multi-host networking, uh, shouldn't be using a uh, um, multi-host uh, orchestration uh, uh, system such as Swarm. Uh, another item that is significant for us, and we are going to address it uh, uh, in the coming cycle, is integration with Magnum. Um, we are um, uh, engaged with the Magnum community, and we have participation from them as well. Uh, the most important thing is one of the uh, things that I, we showed on the pictures, having containers in VMs and having uh, efficient networking for such containers. And um, it looks like that uh, we need uh, some enhancement in Neutron itself. VLAN aware VMs turns out to be the solution. A lot of people are interested in the work. The work uh, has been uh, going on for some time, but I think now with the interest from many, many communities, that work uh, will speed up. Um, and as I mentioned early on, uh, we are going to have integration with Cola and provide containerized solutions as well. Um, with that, uh, we are ready for questions. Yeah, sure. So, so basically, if I understand correctly, this uh, driver cannot work in a situation where you have a container running inside the VM, like, for example, Magnum does, right? Right. It's currently it's not. Yeah, it doesn't provide that any uh, networking in those situations. Um, and I think we are going to work on that, and there are solutions that are already been planned out. That's one of the major things that we are going to address. Yeah. The question was how you deal with uh, nested architectures where you have containers running in VMs and whether you could do something better than what is being done now, uh, like having overlays on top of overlays or 
uh, whether you could utilize uh, courier in that situation. And the answer was not right now, but that's something that is in our uh, plans. And, and we will have a, a session tomorrow. Uh, Tony and Gal, uh, who started the career project, will be presenting career. Uh, what time is it? So everybody knows. Uh, sometime tomorrow. <laughs> It's tomorrow. Oh, just tomorrow. Yes. How does all this relate to Magnum? If, if, uh, if Magnum is in full production, yeah. if it's a production use, would, wouldn't people use Magnum to connect containers to networks? So that is essentially the plan. Integration with Magnum. Now the networking in Magnum is uh, evolved such that it's going to allow different uh, networking backends. And we are going to take advantage of changes that are being made in Neutron to provide efficient connectivity between containers that are running in VM. Right now, that integration is not there, but that's what we hope to achieve in this cycle. Um, just a quick, very, very important note, because stickers are like really important. Um, I don't know if you saw on one of these slides, but there were uh, some stickers off to the, to the uh, left side. Uh, but these stickers actually exist, and we have the sticker designer here with us today. He's famous for stickers. But seriously, Magnum, Keystone, if you want stickers, come up and get this them afterwards. This is the afterwards. place to be. Go ahead. Yeah. So Nova, through Nova Docker? Yeah. That uses Neutron itself, right? So, uh, yeah, correct. Right, none of that has happened. Yeah, yeah, we, this is, we are just at the beginning of this journey. Yeah, we just started. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.